let's switch times to 1911 in Elmwood, Tennessee, in Southern Men. So a noted historian by the name of Albert V. Goodpasture, representing the New York Museum of History, called on John Henry Joe, of course, Grandpapa Joe, of course. He required, Mr. Joe, of course, we have a historical description of a treasure chest called a black box that supposedly belonged to the Duke of Monmouth and contained the proof of his legitimacy to be the rightful heir to the throne of England. Our description of a black box was veneered uh, black walnut, 14 and a quarter by eight and a half by nine and a quarter with a floor de lay of France in brass. Have you ever seen or heard of a box this description in your family? Grandpapa turned and pointed. You mean that box that's sorting the front door? Mr. Goodpasture was convinced that this indeed was the Duke of Mama's black box, thought for years to have been lost or destroyed. He was so convinced that, as a representative of the museum, he was authorized to offer Grandpapa $10,000. Grandpapa did not think long, but decided quickly that if a box could have contained the throne of England, he would not part with it. Certainly not his, not his being a staunch Protestant and anti-Catholic helping in this decision. The museum uh, did ask for and receive permission to build a replica of the box and uh, had on display in New York. Uh, I've had several people say that uh, they have been in, in the museum in New York, they have seen the box, they have read the history of the box being, being held by uh, Joe Courses in Elmwood, Tennessee. In other words, it's there somewhere. I have tried to uh, find the museum of, of some record of it somewhere, and I cannot find it. In 1987, I contacted uh, the keeper of the Duke of Mama's properties in Bowhill, S-E-L-K-I-R-K, Scotland, uh, named the Duke of Bookaby. I told him that we had the box and we thought it had came down to the Glover family. And further uh, added that since it was not our heirloom, but his, only the Jell, of course, had been keepers of the box for 100 years, it might be that he might wish to obtain it. Uh, he responded by asking what I thought it would be a fair price, and I responded that I thought 50,000 pounds. In a letter dated January 5, 1988, the Duke informed me that without the absolute proof that this was indeed the black box, he would not be interested. He further stated that there were several boxes made uh, almost uh, exactly like this one uh, we had, namely the, the uh, money box as of uh, Bonnie Prince Charles. Uh, he, he had furnished a picture. So now in our possession of uh, all these years of uh, being declared authentic by the museum, but questioned by the Duke, we find ourselves in possession of a very old, old, probable box, which we feel like belonged to King Louis the Fourteenth, who in turn gave it to Henry Etta. And remember that uh, Charles the First, when he was in war with Parliament, his son Charles the Second and his mother Charles the First's wife Henrietta, who was a sister of King Louis the Fourteenth. They went to France when Charles I was in war. And there in France was where Charles II met this barmaid, Lucy Walters. And there came, but from their union, came the Duke of Monmouth. And so therefore the family believes that King Louis gave the box to Henrietta. Henrietta gave the box to uh, Charles. Charles gave the box to Monmouth, and then Monmouth threw, lost, lost the box in the war, and it came down through, through the Glover family. Here we have the Tiger of the Lady. You remember the old Roman story, the Tiger of the Lady. Behind one door is the Lady, proof of the heir to the throne of England, and the other is a four or five hundred year old box, just worth what it is historically. That basically is the story of the black box. I hope this kind of spells it out for you, John. I'm, I hate that I had to read some of this, but I've gotten where I just can't remember a lot of uh, dates and times and like I used to, but I've also got the printed thing here of, of the evidence of uh, what we feel like is the black box that belonged to the Duke of Monmouth. You, you with the black box there one of these days, maybe 
you'll find some way to find somehow there in New York, one of the museums that built the replica and why they built the replica, they, they would only build the replica if they thought that that was the original box and they had the history there with the black box. When we lived on Cedar Lane, there was a lady that lived next door and she had come back from New York and she came over and she said, uh, Mr. Jell, of course, uh, I was in uh, New York in a museum and I, God, I can't remember what museum it was. I, and she said, I saw this display of this black treasure box there, and it talked about a Jellicorse family from Elmwood, Tennessee, that had uh, had this black box belonged to the Duke of Monmouth. And I said, yeah, we, I've got that here in the house. And she said, well, that is amazing. And I took her inside and showed it to her. But then I forgot to ask her what museum it was. So that uh, Albert V. Goodpasture declared to be this, the black box of the Duke of Monmouth as he stood on the in, in line and he said, I hereby proclaim myself to be the legal heir to the throne of England by the proof hereby contained in the black box, though which the only proof contained in the black box would have been a marriage certificate between Charles II and Lucy Walters in that little secret drawer in the, in the box. That would have been the throne of England. That's exactly what it would have been, the throne of England.